This week's Federal Flash covers the renewal of the Federal Career and Technical Education Law, or CTE, which is on its way to the President's desk. We'll tell you three important things to know about the new CTE legislation. We'll also review the Education Department's proposed new rules for the Charter School Program and a proposal from House Democrats to renew the Higher Education Act. Let's start with CTE. Monica, give us the good news. Thanks, Philip. It's not every week that we have good news to share from Capitol Hill, but we certainly do today. With time running out before members of Congress head home to campaign for the midterm election in August, a rewrite of the Carl D. Perkins Career and Technical Education Act had to happen quickly. Usually, the House passes one version of a bill, the Senate passes another, and they meet to work on a compromise of the two versions in a conference committee. Then each chamber passes the compromise bill. Usually that process takes a while. This time, the Senate Education Committee passed its bill in late June, and the full Senate raced to pass a slightly modified version of that bill on Monday. On Wednesday, the House passed the Senate's bill, allowing them to avoid a conference committee altogether and send the bill to President Trump for his signature. That's right, Monica. This is an example where good politics actually pushed good policy. The Perkins rewrite had been stalled, but the urge to use the rewrite on the campaign trail helped to push Congress to finish the job. And this urge to get something done didn't just come from Congress. The White House stepped in to move things along, including the personal, the personal involvement of Ivanka Trump. So what's in the bill that people should know? First, there's a stronger focus on equity. For example, states and districts must continually make meaningful progress toward improving the performance of historically underserved students. This is the first time such language appears in the law. This won't trigger improvement requirements based on the performance of historically underserved students, like under the Every Student Succeeds Act, but it does prioritize underserved students in a way that we haven't seen before in Perkins. Second, there's a strong emphasis on quality. Perkins requires states and districts to set performance targets. If states want to modify these targets, the new legislation requires that the new targets be higher than the actual performance of students for the prior two years. This is important because the legislation eliminates the ability of the Education Department to negotiate measures of performance with states. Three, by more effectively integrating and aligning the work of school districts, employers, and post-secondary institutions, the legislation encourages more students to graduate from high school with credit toward a post-secondary credential and a work-based learning experience. After President Trump signs the bill, the Education Department will need to put in place a process to review State Perkins' plans, similar to the nearly completed process of reviewing and approving State ESSA plans. As details become available, we'll be, we'll be sure to keep you posted. In the meantime, the Department issued seven proposed priorities for grants issued through the Federal Charter School Program including replicating charter schools that serve high school students and using funding to close low-performing schools and reopen them as charter schools. The proposed priorities and requirements are open for public comment via the link below. Comments are due on August 27. Finally, House Democrats have proposed an alternative to the PROSPER Act, the House Republican bill to reauthorize the Higher Education Act. It's called the AIM Higher Act. The hallmark of the proposal is a federal-state partnership that requires states to offer all students two years of tuition-free community college in exchange for federal funding. The bill won't go anywhere in the Republican-controlled House, but that could change after the midterm elections. That's all for today. For an email alert when the next episode of Federal Flash is available, email us at alliance at allfored.org. Thanks for watching. Federal Flash is the Alliance for Excellent Education's video series on important developments in education policy in Washington, D.C. in five minutes or less.